Hi, thank you for visiting my RC channel. My name is Bill and I'm a RC radio control enthusiast and I also do RC reviews. Thank you for joining me for this review of this newly released Cadex Tarsier 4K 30 frames per second 1200 TVL dual lens super wide dynamic range mini FPV camera supplied courtesy of banggood.com to review and share with you now the name Tarsia comes from this nocturnal marsupial or night ape as it is also called and as you can see got very big eyes and here we've got a dual lens too now the Tarsia is renowned for its good vision particularly night vision although I'm not saying that this camera is particularly for night but should be okay in the dark in reasonable lighting so over here the lenses are small but on the top I'm assuming this is the top I never know with these FPV cameras this has a 4K sensor and the bottom one has a sensor for FPV. So this is innovative and looks very promising. Comes nicely packaged in this box. And if I remove it. This is it. Attached to the DVR and camera board. Comes in this blue color and also comes in a black and the width is 19 millimeters the height is 20 millimeters and has a depth of 16 millimeters so should fit into most frames easily and on the DVR and camera board here the holes are 20 millimeters by 20 millimeters apart and the total width 29 by 29 millimeters so pretty standard for most towers too and as well as having the dual lens this also has dual audio digital microphones also has EIS electronic image stabilization OSD on-screen display and also app control via Wi-Fi comes with ND8 filter lenses on and you can get ND and ND16 filter lenses uh, optional separately now Albert Kim reviewed a prototype of this about a month ago and I watched his video and this is the final retail version that is now out and it seems as though they paid a lot of attention to what he had to say and had to recommend so in the box with this we get a whole lot of cables and connections to make it easier to connect onto most FC boards nowadays we get a menu board that we can manually navigate plug in and navigate through the on-screen display and we also get a spare cable because this cable does look as though it can be sensitive although this cable doesn't seem to be as long as the one that's on here if one possibly needs a shorter cable one can maybe exchange too on the bottom here We've also got a heat sink, which is good to assist with cooling. So there's this plate on the bottom and there's some thermal tape or thermal paste between this. And this doesn't come with any manual, but you can download the manual. And I'll put a link in the description of this video where you can download the manual. 
and that will take you to this page so you can click and download the user manual here and you can also download the app for Android and Apple from here or directly from Google Play or the Apple Store and the app for this is called Cadex FPV all one word if I download here this is it so if we have a look here we get all the connections numbered and then over here all the numbers tell you the various connections over here how to use it pressing the two function keys some notes before use so this only uses a U3 and above TF card because of the high bit rate and it's recommended that it be formatted in FAT32 before you put it in the camera and that you reformat it again once it's in the camera using the settings to format the card. Okay. Also says that the AGND ports and the ground port must be connected to the ground of the FC board simultaneously or else this may cause interference on the image. Says the flat cable here shouldn't be folded and a good feature this also saves the data if there's a sudden power loss but they do recommend that you reconnect and power it as soon as possible to save any remaining data automatically and we get a feature of the app here and I'll show you the app separately so here you can see Cadex FPV both on Google Play and Android in the App Store so a very basic user guide and as mentioned this can record 4k at 30 frames per second and can also record up to 120 frames per second in a re resolution of 720p he has a picture of the resolutions and he has a picture of some specs So I'm going to put this onto this JEPRC Signet CX3 that currently has a run cam split on and see how it performs on this. So I'm just going to remove the top plates in that here and I'll show you how I fit this. So this is the top plate off, just four screws on either side here to be removed to get the top plate off now if you're doing your own build and putting this onto a build obviously you'd be building up your standoffs but with this one I just need to remove the receiver that's on top here and the board here so on the DVR board here we get this cable that comes with it so it's a 5 pin that goes into here so we've got our red wire a 5 to 12 volts positive ground wire, the yellow wire is video wire, you've got the green wire for menu board and then the black wire we've got this A, G and D ground. We also get this little cable here and this is just an extension that plugs into here and also into this OSD menu board over here to manually plug into the OSD we get four screws we get four hard spaces we also get a clip that will need to be put onto here that holds the SD card in and secures it in place and we just get this black wire here so I'm going to have to splice 
this black wire into the A, G and D here and splice it into the ground here as previously mentioned so that we don't get interference on the video. Now on here where I've removed the run cam split board I've got a 5 to 12 volt positive, I've got the ground and I've got the yellow video cable but on this one it goes into a 4 pin plug and the end of this one is only a 3 pin plug so with the JEPRC one also gets this spare cable which is a 4 pin that does plug into there but the only thing is the black wires on the outside and the red wire on the inside if you have a look here the positive is on the outside and the negative on the inside I'm going to leave this on the run cam split and then I'm going to cut this wire and cut this over here and join it up but swap the red and black around and connect the yellow to the white wire here. I've also fitted the camera on, quite easy, just the two screws here on this, but you should have a mounting bracket on whatever one you do want to do too. And it fits in this frame quite nicely and should be fairly well protected here then we have to have a look and see which way around that this needs to be mounted basically without bending the ribbon cable the best bet is to have it come from bottom underneath and then over here with the heat sink at the bottom which is probably not the best place for it but if we do it the other way around with the heat sink at the top I'm going to struggle to get the SD card in and out and this cover still needs to come on as well and access to these buttons here but now the biggest problem is these screws that come with it are 1.6 millimeters in diameter and only 10 centimeters long. So by the time I put a screw through, I can just screw on a standoff. It comes with spaces, but no point really because there's just not enough length on the screw to accommodate that the screw is also too short to put through the frame and upwards and still get to the top and i'd still like to mount the receiver on top here as well i really don't understand why they send this with such short screws because this stack can't be taken apart it's not wise to remove the heat sink either and this screw barely just keeps this stack together without any provision for attaching to a frame so even if I want to do this the thread that's remaining on the standoff isn't long enough to get through this frame and this is not the thickest frame around and then it still needs to be secured with a nut underneath so the best thing for me to do I think is get some 1.6 millimeter by 20 millimeter screws that should be adequate and high enough to come up from the bottom to the top and I won't have to compromise my soft mounts on the bottom here either so this makes it very frustrating and disappointing and now I have to go and try and source screws that are suitable for this. So 
please subscribe, like, comment and share if you like my videos.